guys. You, uh, you guys have to see this. This is super sad. Downstairs in the lobby, there is someone ordered food last night and never picked it up. I'm assuming they fell asleep or something, but it's the saddest, saddest sight right here. Look at this. That's a whole ass meal. It's a whole pizza. They just never picked it up. Could you imagine waking up and realize you ordered a pizza and like a whole meal and you've never picked it up the night before? That would, that would cause me physical pain. Can I get two breakfast sandwiches, please? So at Tim's, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to explain this. My hair is so flat right now. Tooks after a shower is never the move. Um, but no, at Tim's, so I had my gift card. She was like, yo, I don't know if this is gonna make sense, but she's like, yo, swipe your gift card. So I went to swipe it, but the next to the swipe thing, there was like another slack that I thought was a swipe thing. So I'm like trying to swipe my card just between like a random piece of plastic on this machine. And the one behind the counter is looking at me like I am insane. And she's like, try the try the one next to it and see if that works, trying to be nice. Yep, smooth as can be, but the other one, I was literally like in the machine, like trying to drag my card through the debit machine. And um, no, I was just dragging it through like the wrong, the wrong piece of plastic, just like a random slat in the machine. So um, that made me feel super good to start my day. Um, but you know what it's worth it, I'm so stoked. I stopped getting meals at Tim's and I started getting two breakfast sandwiches because that's what I'm there for. It's the breakfast sandwiches. Then you can do bacon and coffee. And I, I throw in a donut and honestly, like it comes out to like, I think just like a dollar more than if I got the meal with the farmer's wraps what I used to get. So I get two breakfast sandwiches, one with sausage, one with bacon. You get the best of both worlds. It's like the same price and I'm more full after. So that's the move, two breakfast sandwiches. Um, and last night we watched Panic Room. Uh, every Friday night, we do a movie night, which should have been in the last vlog whenever I edited it. Um, and one of my favorite parts about watching these movies is after the following morning, is I will go and I'll watch like all the behind the scenes of the movie and I'll watch all the like theories about the movie, just like get a deeper understanding and appreciation for the movies. And I honestly enjoy doing that. So I'm gonna watch the behind the scenes of Panic Room. I'm gonna eat my two breakfast sandwiches. Pretty low key day so far. I spent the morning after I finished my my two breakfast sandwiches um, working on some podcast stuff, just finishing up my edit with Adam Greenberg, um, scheduling some social content, scheduling the podcast, DMing some new people, taking some big swings, trying to get some new guests for the podcast. Uh, but now I have no podcast stuff until Monday, which is weird. I almost always have podcasts to edit or research or prep for. And I have all the podcasts I have coming up, I've already got the research done. I've edited every podcast I've recorded. I have no podcast podcast stuff. So I'll probably spend some time working on my YouTube, my next YouTube documentary, which I'm keeping a secret for the time being. Um, I like to just keep people, keep people guessing. Um, but the main reason I wanted to vlog today was because I'm going to be in a clubhouse room tonight, um, which for those who don't know, is like an audio only social media platform. Uh, so I was going to record me in this clubhouse room with a couple big YouTubers actually with Just Dustin. It's your boy. I'm also Dr. Chris. He's another YouTuber. had him on my podcast. I'm also Just Dustin on the podcast. Um, I believe Amanda Rayner is going to be in the there as well so it's gonna be the five of us talking about community building so i'm gonna be in that room tonight for probably an hour or so um and so i'm gonna record that and put some of the clips in here to you so i was like you know what i should have a vlog around this clubhouse thing um but now hallie and i are actually we're gonna go for a little little walk um other than going to take the dog out this morning in tim's uh, before today i don't think i've been outside in a couple of days so i'm gonna try and get outside for a little here the weather it's beautiful outside so we're gonna take advantage of that go for a little walk probably come back um yeah, work on a little bit on that YouTube documentary prep and then just get ready for my clubhouse today. Oh. Honestly, these chill Saturdays are pretty fun. Oh, oh no. Awesome. I, uh, I'll put something on top. Most days I feel like I'm working a lot. So to have a day like this where I don't really have anything pressing to work on, it's a nice change of pace. Um, 
And I think I'm just gonna kinda chill out here and work on this dock. And when I work on this dock, I mean watch YouTube videos for like the next hour and a half and call it working. Um, but no, if you haven't streamed or haven't watched Tomorrow Night with David Dobrik yet, go check it out. Um, it's, maybe actually, maybe I'll edit one of my vlogs. I've just been filming vlogs and not editing them. Like, I think this is my fifth vlog or something where I've recorded with no editing. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll take some time this afternoon to edit a vlog. So, who knows, we'll see, just kind of chill out on the couch and do whatever. All right, so I'm editing the vlog now. This vlog is from, I think, November. Let me go back to being November 7th. Oh shit, what happened? This vlog is back from November 7th. And the reason my vlogs kind of died was because when we, so we went, this vlog is me golfing with my brother and my granddad. We went golfing. And um, the reason they stopped is my brother was taking a bunch of videos this day too. And um, I was waiting for him to send me them. And we just kind of forgot. And then I fell off the vlogging wagon. So I was like, whatever. So I was like, yo, send me these, those videos. He literally sent me all the copies are his. All the, these ones are mine except for the copies. There is only three. I literally waited like three months for him to send me three videos when he hyped it up like he had a hundred. So shout out to Josh. I mean, to be fair, they are some pretty good shots. Like this one's pretty clean. Um, right here, I do enjoy this shot. This was a good angle. Um, but three months for three shots, you know? But we got them. We're, we're back on the vlogging grind now. We're editing, so I'm gonna get this one posted. Maybe today, um, but yeah, I'm gonna, gonna get back to it. All right, guys, we are about 10, not even 10 minutes out until my clubhouse debut. Um, not that that's gonna be a poll or anything, no, but I'm also, like I said, I'm gonna record all of the clubhouse, because clubhouse there's no video. So I'm gonna record it behind the scenes here. I got my camera ready. I'm gonna record it with good audio into my computer with my Yeti. I've got some nice little mood lighting behind me here, a little extra light bouncing off the wall over there. Um, I'm stoked. Um, Clubhouse right now though is only available for iPhone. I'm on a Google Pixel, so I've literally had to download the app on my iPad. And like the UI on iPad or the UX is, hold on, let me hold my iPad here, is not ideal. Like this is what I'm working with. You can't even see it. Oh, I don't know if you can even tell, but it's just like, it's still formatted for an iPhone screen, but on my iPad, so it's just a super small window here. Also thinking, I don't really know how Clubhouse works. Like I haven't, I really haven't been on it since I downloaded it. I don't know the etiquette. I don't know how you're supposed to, how it works. What, like again, the etiquette's the big thing. Like how do we know who's gonna go? How do we know who's not? How do we know when it wraps up? I'm not moderating it, but it's lucky. Uh, Dr. Chris Rayner will be moderating this one. Also again, shout out to him for inviting me to be a part of this. Honestly honored. It's a bunch of people with big followings and me. So I'm um, genuinely, of being in this group but yeah we're just gonna kind of make it up on the fly here see how things go um, i'm sure it'll be fine it's gonna lend to my skill set with the podcast and everything so i'm not too too concerned um but yeah we're about five minutes out here now and i'm really excited uh, should be should be a good time like i said i'll put some of these clips in here so if you're if you didn't get the chance to watch it now right now in the moment uh, you'll get to watch it here on the vlog if i can just jump in here quick I think when it comes to community building, like we've talked about how it's a long time. I think like community building is a forever game. I think like as you progress as a creator and as you go along, like your your community will constantly evolve and change. And so you can't just focus on building community for like four years and then quit focusing on the community because that community will slowly deteriorate. I think it's a forever game as you evolve as a person and a creator and as your audience evolves and grows up and changes, you're going to have to change and the community is going to change over time. So I think growing a community never stops and I don't think there's a timeline you can focus on because like I said, I think it's a forever game. I was going to say with Emma Chamberlain too and like with the, the conversation around like making content for the algorithm, you can make content in the, your way and your style, but take the trends that come and go and do them in your own way. Like Emma Chamberlain's channel popped when she was just vlogging, but then she did a popular trend being a dollar store haul and that video popped and that's what put her channel on and allowed her to grow. So you can make the content you want to create, but also look at the trends and just take the trends that are available, that are currently popping on the platform and do them in your own way, in your own style. So you're still making a video that you want to make, but doing it within what's trendy at the time to get more exposure. And I think for, especially for, for smaller creators, that can be an overwhelming thing. And it doesn't have to be like you're spending 
30 hours a week on your YouTube channel. Now make sure you're spending 30 on Instagram and 30 on TikTok. Like using Gary Vee as an example, like his thing is 80, 20. So he'll go like 80% on one platform, but just experiment on those other platforms with the other 20% of his time. So it's not like not trying to overwhelm yourself by taking on too much, just making sure you're active there somewhat, but it doesn't have to be like an equal split between each platform. And, and to build, yeah, to build on that point, that Sean was making around you don't need to have like the biggest audience to monetize it and go full-time youtuber I, I interviewed a guy named Jay Swanson who launched a patreon and went full-time on YouTube with only 40,000 subscribers and the reason he was able to do that was because of the connection he had with his audience right like he didn't need hundreds of thousands or even millions of subscribers before he went full-time because he got enough patrons to subsidize his full-time income that he could quit his job so I think that I just want to add that as you said an example to not needing the biggest audience to go full time. And I think the other thing I'll add to, I don't have three tips or anything, but I think for me, especially really early on, it's building that community and that audience one by one. It's responding to comments. It's replying to your DMs. It's even like beating your subscribers to the punch or upon an Instagram context, beating your followers to the punch and going to their account and liking and commenting on their photos before they even comment on yours. It's doing those little things that stand out as a smaller creator that as you scale, it's going to be harder and harder to do when you have thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions of followers. You can't do that with all of your followers or subscribers. But if you only have like 150, you can do that. And that's a competitive advantage that you have as a smaller creator that a bigger creator won't have. So it's just building that community, that audience one by one, one person at a time. Um, that's just my, my, the other thing that I'll add is a small creator that you can do. Yeah, my, my last last point here I'll make, and it's kind of similar to be humble, but it's as you as you grow, never forget why you started. I can remember like my first podcast getting 10 downloads on my first episode and I was hyped. And it's holding on to that feeling, right? Because now if I got 10 downloads on a podcast, I'd be bummed. But as long as you can hold on to that feeling of just why you started creating in the first place, that's going to carry you through some of those harder moments as a creator. That's a great point, Jacob. I think a lot of people believe that the, the road is straight up. There are a lot of ebbs and flows, a lot of peaks and valleys. And uh, if you don't kind of stay, find something to stay grounded in through those uh, valleys, um, it can get pretty tough. Like, I know, I'm kind of sure I, I can speak for Dustin as well on this, that, like, you have an up and you think it's just going to be your skyrocketing to the moon and it's never going to come down again. And it comes down. At some point, it's going to come down. And uh, and if you can weather through that, that kind of valley, you will get back to another peak and things can continue forward and progressing. But don't get too caught up in those downs because at one point, like you said, Jacob, that down was, was amazing. You would have been, you know, celebrating, screaming from the rooftops at that down number. Uh, so, yeah, definitely find something like that to stick around. I think that's a great point. That clubhouse room went way longer than I thought. We ran for just over two hours. I thought it was going to be like an hour. It was a lot of fun, though. It was a really good good group, some good conversation. I definitely had a couple takeaways. Hopefully, I got a couple clips I was able to share with you there. Um, but no, if you made it this far in the vlog, thank you so much for checking it out. I really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. I'll put out new vlogs sporadically whenever I have a chance to kind of edit them. Um, but yeah, if you want to get hear more from me, you can subscribe to my podcast, my social life podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts, and right here on YouTube. You can also check out my documentary that I released on David Dobrik called Tomorrow Night with David Dobrik. I'll make sure that's linked in the description as well. But seriously, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. I know I signed off already for the night, but I just got an email um, earlier today, actually before. I'm reading a book right now called I'm Dying Up Here, which chronicles the golden age of comedy in LA in like the 1970s. Um, and focusing around the comedy store that's about Jay Leno and Dave Letterman one of the main figures in this book is Tom Dreesen um, and I never heard it before until I was reading this book and I was like he has a really interesting story so I googled him to see if he has a, his own book about it, like an autobiography or anything and it came out a couple months ago and I was like you know well, let me see if I can get, get an email in front of his team or his people or himself and see if I can get him on the podcast and so I sent him an email and be like hey I'm reading this book I'm engrossed in your story I'm going to read your book next um I'd love to have you on my podcast. Here's some of my previous guests. Here's my testimonial from the co-founder of Starbucks. And uh, yeah, I just got an email like 11.30 p.m. It said, Jacob, call the office at 10 a.m. PST on Monday. We'll set up the interview. So I'm <laughs> pretty excited. Um, you never know. You never know who's going to say yes. Just shoot your shot.